and exploring how well, based on empirical evidence, the minimum wage actually achieves its goals. I'll first explore what many consider its primary aims, protecting workers and aiding the poor. So when it was first established through the Fair Labour Standards Act in 1938, um, one of its initial objectives was the elimination of labour conditions detrimental to the maintenance of minimum standards of living. Um, and in the 1930s in the Great Depression, the excess of labour supply over demand and the non-existent bargaining power of desperate low-wage workers allowed for employers to charge minuscule wages. But through an example from St. Louis, with the blue line representing labour demanded and the red line representing labour supplied, um, shows that labour supply has been exceeding labour demand for the last 20 years, um, with a massive excess in labour supply seen during the COVID-19 pandemic, proving that minimum wages still work to prevent the exploitation of workers when there is a surplus of supply and are still relevant in um, achieving this goal. Next goal, aiding the poor and reducing inequality, is a far more contentious subject because, as my group explored, while it would logically follow that minimum wage would aid in reducing poverty and inequality, as I will explore with empirical evidence, minimum wage implementation can fall short in achieving this primary aim. Firstly, in helping families in poverty, a study in 1986 found that only 10% of low-wage teens and 18% of low-wage adults belong to poor families. And while this same study did um, acknowledge that an increase in the minimum wage to $4.25 reduced the poverty gap for low-income families by 11% and the number of families in poverty by 8.7%, Overall, it found that um, the positive effect on low-income families would be far more effective if minimum wage was better at targeting the poor and not teens. And in regards to reducing inequality, another study found that minimum wage reduces a tax effect that allocates the benefits of higher earnings evenly across all levels, as well as causing increases in higher wages, meaning that um, the effect of the minimum wage on reducing inequality is negligible. The last thing I will address is the argument that minimum wage reduces employment because while it would logically follow that it does, a lot of empirical evidence would argue the contrary. So um, a 1982-25 time series study found that a 10% increase in minimum wage reduced employment by 1-3% to supporting, um, supporting the idea that it does reduce employment. However, the study of fast food restaurants in New Jersey and Pennsylvania in 1992 um, suggested a small positive employment effect on those minimum wage workers who received um, an increase in New Jersey. Finally, a much more recent and in-depth study found negligible effects. So while there were many contrasting views in all cases, it was found that the effect on unemployment was incredibly small, if not non-existent. So while it may not be as effective in achieving its goals as would be expected, the arguments against its impl implementation is not as detrimental to employment as expected either. It is also important to note that these studies also agreed that the minimum wage um, targeted teens more than the impoverished adults and families. So the main takeaways from this small sample of the empirical evidence surrounding the minimum wage debate are that most empirical studies I found and minimum wage implementation and increases fail to target the poorest of families and workers, instead impacting mostly teens and other workers that do not come from low income households. Secondly, that when implemented, workers from low-income households are more likely to face unemployment and be substituted for capital, high-skilled workers, or teens. And finally, most studies agreed that minimum wage as a policy to protect workers and reduce poverty could work, but needs to target the people who need it, be large enough to make a real impact on poverty levels, and um, come in conjunction with job security. So minimum wage policy, while a transformative improvement for workers at the time it was introduced, has many merits in protecting workers by ensuring a certain standard of living. And as my group members explored, it should in theory achieve its goals, but in some ways it is failing to do so.